Gaines is an avid Twitter user. With Mizzou's move to the SEC, he says he wants to part with his current Twitter name, at GainesTrain31. He says new conference, new Twitter name, new statistics, new awards, new everything. Big 12 North versus Big 12 South, SEC versus the Longhorn Network, we'll stick with the basics. An unranked Missouri versus 21st ranked Texas, the only Big 12 team Gary Pinkle has yet to beat. Missouri native Trevor Relliford, a guard for Alabama, actually had a team high 26 points. His brother is a Kansas Jayhawk. Playoffs, I'll have a live interview with Boonville and Owensville head coaches coming up in sports. Tomorrow's Missouri basketball game against Baylor is the first ever top five matchup in Big 12 history, not featuring Texas or Kansas. Welcome back, everyone. The Missouri basketball team's satisfying season seemed at its peak just a couple days ago. 30 wins under its belt, a Big 12 tournament championship, and a one-way ticket punch to the NCAA tournament as a top seed. Then, an underestimated low-seeded Norfolk State would crash the Tigers' party and make NCAA tournament history. Doriel Green Beckham was not listed on today's release of the depth chart, but that could change before the first scrimmage of fall camp on August 11th. Senior tailback Kendall Lawrence said he used to get lost all the time as a freshman around Columbia on Mizzou's campus. He said even as a senior, I still get lost sometimes. We're going to flash back really fast to 13 years ago. There's a job opening at Missouri for the head basketball coach position after Norm Stewart decides to retire. A couple of the job applicants include Tulsa head coach Bill Self and New Jersey Nets coach John Calipari. Neither of these men end up being the Missouri hire. Now, Calipari and Self aren't competing for a job. They're competing for a national title. Now I'm joined by Stephen Keller, who Digger Phelps earlier this morning appointed ESPN student captain of the Missouri fans. Lawrence says Deuce isn't allowed to have any other object in his hands, like a basketball or a baseball. Lawrence's rule is football only. And the doors are just about to open for the fans to finally fill these seats for a much anticipated game of the fourth ranked Missouri Tigers versus the eighth ranked Kansas Jayhawks. So I'm outside of the Missouri Theater, the venue of this year's Mizzou Roars, and I'm actually here with Mizzou campus power couple quarterback James Franklin and Missouri volleyball player Molly Kreklow. This is the first Memorial Day in three years that the Missouri Tigers softball team is not preparing for the College World Series. Think about all the things you can do in 15 minutes. Throw in a load of laundry, make a cup of coffee, bake a frozen pizza, and while some of you may have been doing some of these things today, Caleb Wilfong ran a 5K for a state title. It's now been a week since Missouri freshman wide receiver Doriel Green Beckham, DGB, was arrested for possession of marijuana. In this edition of Zavala at the Zoo, Ashley Zavala shows us a side of DGB off of the football field and the connection he has with the player in the NFL. The first time Jeremy Macklin heard about Doriel Green Beckham, he was surprised to learn the number one high school football recruit in the country at the time was from Missouri. I'm figuring, you know, he's, he's from somewhere in Texas or something like that. He's like, he's from Springfield, Missouri. I went and I watched, you know, some film on him, on rivals and stuff like that. And all you know, the kids are flat out balling. You know? Now, as a freshman at Mizzou, coaches compare Doriel to the elite receivers who've gone through the program, including Macklin, a wide receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, he's someone that I heard about growing up back in middle school and high school, really. I mean, I heard a lot about him. Doriel is more like Denario size-wise, height-wise, but very quick and, and top-end speed like J-Mac. And so, uh, I mean, he's, uh, he's going to be a tough matchup for anybody, especially as, as he keeps progressing throughout this season in his career. 80 yards for the true freshman. His but Macklin and Doriel have similarities much deeper than the state where they grew up and how they perform on the football field. As children, both experienced difficult living situations with their biological parents. And as a result, both were adopted by football coaches. Jeff Paris was Macklin's peewee football coach in St. Louis. By the time Macklin was in high school, he was living with the Paris family full time. Hillcrest High School football coach John Beckham brought Doriel Green into his foster home in Springfield when Doriel was in seventh grade. From then on, Doriel attached Beckham to his last name. I can, I can understand, you know, what a guy like that goes through. Um, you know, obviously everybody has their own story, but, um, you know, I, I can appreciate, you know, the type of hard work it takes to get to this point, knowing that, you know, knowing his, circ his circumstances from, from growing up and not really having the, the ideal childhood. Yeah, being adopted, really, I mean, just, 
I mean, having those people in my life is really what changed my whole life around and gave me the mindset to be humble, really. He's a humble young man for all the the uh, great things he's done in his high school career, but he's he's a very, very great person. Despite how much the two have in common, Doriel says he wants to pave his own path. Macklin says that he's got a feeling that Columbia, the state of Missouri, and the nation will get to see a lot of great things from Doriel. In Columbia, Ashes of Allah, can we wait sports? After Doriel's arrest and suspension, Jeremy Macklin says he wants to help the freshman and become a mentor. Four years of college football can turn a player into a father figure for his teammates. KOMU 8's Ashley Zavala tells us about one senior who has become a unique role model during the past few years. Setting an example for others is a responsibility associated with being a football player. For his teammates, Kendall Lawrence does exactly that. To the other running backs that are back there, you know, he kind of helps them out in uh, different things that they need to know or maybe don't know. He uh, pretty much just helps out everybody that he can. He does a good job of being a leader, especially with how he plays. Uh, and by, one, by that, I mean, like, if someone misses a block or if I, for some reason, call the wrong play, uh, he adjusts and he makes play, turns a, a loss, five-yard loss, into, like, a 40-yard gain. A first down as he gets inside the UCF territory. Lawrence's leadership qualities stem from all that he's seen as a running back for Missouri. He played as a true freshman, was a backup for Derek Washington, and last year, the first season Lawrence was meant to start, he suffered a leg injury and watched Henry Josie rush to national recognition. I think it has paid off so far because, I mean, uh, when you get injured and stuff, you, uh, I mean, it's just like a humble experience. You know? I mean, you just, you just have to find another gear to get in to go out there and, and just make sure you do everything you can to get back on the field. Number four, Kendall Lawrence. As a starter in his senior year, Lawrence proves himself to be Missouri's most valuable player on offense so far this season. He scored more touchdowns than the entire wide receiver unit combined and racked up more yards rushing than any other player on Missouri's offense. Kendall Lawrence making a guy miss and gaining all that yardage all on his own effort. Uh, I mean, it's not surprising because we know he's a great player and, I mean, he can do great things when he's out there. But um, it's not, you know, so much down in the offense. I mean, it's just enhancing what he can do better than, uh, better than anybody else can. Lawrence isn't just trying to set an example as a football player. He's also trying to set an example as a man for his baby cousin Zakari, also known as Deuce, who lives by Lawrence's hometown in Texas. The lifestyle he has growing up right now, he doesn't really have like a father figure or anything like that. So, I mean, just every time I would go back home, uh, ever since he was one, I guess I would just pick him up and hang out with him and just keep him for the weekends and things like that. So he, he, he obviously looks up to me now and he likes to come up here and watch the football games. Lawrence claims Deuce would make a pretty good football player, but isn't sure which position he would play. I don't know exactly because he can't really talk right now, but he'd be a big running back if he could. When the two are together, Lawrence says Deuce isn't allowed to have any other object in his hands, like a basketball or a baseball. Lawrence's rule is football only. With the SEC's expansion comes SEC Media Day expansion. The SEC distributed more than 1,100 credentials for this year's Media Days. It's a little bit of, of an out-of-body experience. So yesterday I was actually feeling kind of dizzy with all the things moving around because there's so many people. The Big 12 is, is always a busy Media Day, but this is really just, just a different dimension. Well, obviously with adding Texas A&M and Missouri, it's, it's going to be bigger. There's more different people. There's more media. You're here. And uh, that's kind of cool. But when you've won six straight national championships each year, more and more and more people show up. And they wonder, can, can the SEC do it again? It's, I've been to all the media days, and trust me, there is no other media day like this one. One of the most notable parts of the event is the extra attention put on players and coaches. These coaches and players are like rock stars. they got the cameras backing up and all that kind of stuff, and they're coming up the escalator with a spotlight down there, and it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. But that, that, that just shows you the interest in SEC football. People here eat this stuff up. Sometimes you can't even tell who the person is inside of the scrum because you'll just see a massive group of media following, and inside you don't know who's there. It's like a cocoon. The coach is surrounded. While players and coaches talk with the media upstairs, fans wait downstairs. I've really never seen that before other than being here once or twice before, and, and you don't quite see that uh, with the Big 12. Tomorrow morning, I don't care how early you go, there's going to be wall-to-wall -wall Alabama fans with helmets, hats, shirts, 
babies, whatever, to get signed. It is unlike when Alabama shows up at this event, it's, it's not like anything else.